be seated. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Shall we have a word of prayer before we start? Our dear Lord Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the love that you have for each and every one of us. You are our creator, our, the great physician. And Father, we just are so blessed that you are in our lives. And we ask, dear Lord, as we start with the sermon, that you will abide and may the Holy Spirit lead us. All these things we ask in your precious name we pray, amen. amen. Two weeks ago, I, um, well not I, but the group in Genesis uh, Tuesday Bible meeting, um, we just got through with this book and whoever wants to use it, you're more than welcome to it. It's called The Fruit of the Spirit. It was an amazing book, and I enjoyed it. And one of the uh, fruit of the spirits that came to my mind was humility. Our scripture this morning is 1 Peter 5, 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You see, humility is like a hidden jewel. Though of great value, like a jewel, is something rarely discovered. But when found, becomes prized possession to its owner. Humility demonstrates respect toward those that have matured in the Lord. Training in righteousness, the development of a spirit of humility and growing in grace. It takes time, more time and much time to develop. Proverbs 22, four says, by humility, and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor on life. A spirit of humility is pleasing to the Father, for it is the spirit that's so representative of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Christ was a man that humbled himself in the power of the Holy Spirit under the mighty hand of the Father. And at the proper time, he was lifted up. In like manner of those that meekly take up their cross, in the power of the Spirit and humble themselves under the mighty hand of God, will grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. In Philippians 2, 1 through 4, says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. So therefore, humility, probably one of the more difficult fruit of the spirit, but possibly one of the most important ones that we need to work with the Holy Spirit. Humil humility is the only antidote for pride. Pride is the sin that Satan committed when he was kicked out of heaven. 
8 says, I will exalt my throne above the throne of God. Well, no. No, you won't. God is in charge. He is above all. He has the right to be obeyed. He expects us to obey him. And if we listen and obey, these things are going to be good in our lives. He says, your life will be blessed. We need to be praying that God will help us do what we need to do. We need to walk in love. In Matthew 24, 12 says, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold and many will be offended. It's so easy today for people to get offended and get angry. But Jesus called us to peace. That's what he wants us to have. And where there's peace, there's power. But we're not going to have peace without humility. We are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. All judgment comes from pride. When we criticize people behind their back, it comes from pride. Humility is one of the most important things that we can learn. Because I can tell you, a person who is proud person has many problems in their life. But a humble person will ask for help when they need it. The proud person wants to do it themselves. And they want to do it their way, because their way is the sure way of doing things. It's the right way. Nobody else would be as good as their way. For example, King Saul finally agreed for David to fight Goliath, but in his terms. He gave him his own armor to David. But David said, I cannot go in these because I'm not used to them. So he took it all off. He took his shepherd's stick and picked up five smooth stones and went after Goliath. You see, when you have the Lord on your side, it's a victorious battle. When you give someone a job, don't be breathing down their necks, thinking that your way is the best way. The proud person always wants to do something they like the, the world, will admire something others see as important. But the truth is, we don't have to do something important to be important. So why are we important? Because God loves us and values us. Our worth comes from him. As we receive love and find our true worth as, the, as his children, then we can truly enjoy our purpose in life and live in contentment because we're nothing in ourselves but we're everything in Christ. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. When we turn to Jesus, we're able to do things that we never dreamed were possible or survive things which we never had to face. When I went to Mexico, as a missionary, I was a translator. And I went from the dental site to the medical site. You think I would lose weight, but I didn't lose any weight. I was running back and forth. Right in the middle of going back and forth, I heard the mayor of the town 
somebody that was important. And I heard him say, it is because of me that you're getting all this free medical and free dental. It was because I care for you. And he was just praising himself. And I'm going, oh, no, he didn't. So my fat little body was running down. And there were some guards here with their rifles. And it didn't matter to me. And I think this, this is what I'm talking about, that if he wants you to do something, he will take away your fear. So I talked to the guards, and I told them, I need to go and talk to the mayor. It's very important. So they put their guns down, and they let me go. And I said, good afternoon. I said, may I borrow your microphone? So he looked at me kind of, he goes, yeah, sure. Yeah. He gave it to me. And I said, we're from the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and we are so glad to be here to help each and every one of you, whoever needs your help, needs the help. It is provided from the church not from him. And I, I walked back, and Dr. Connor goes, Stell, was that you? And I go, yeah, I don't know what happened, but let's continue. I'm, let, I'm running back and forth again. But through Jesus Christ, do you think without him, I don't think I would have been able to do that. I would have been afraid to do that, to see these guards with their rifles. And may, I mean, I could, they could have taken me. I don't know. But the fear was gone, and I could only do it through him, to serve him that way. So because we cannot do it without him, we can do whatever we need to do through him. Because we can lean on Christ and trust him to help us. Ephesians 3.12, Paul says, because our faith in him, we dare to have the boldness, the courage, and the confidence of free access. Approach to God with freedom and without fear. 1 Timothy 1.15, this is a faith saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of which I am chief. He is also saying, in Christ, because of knowing who we are in him, we can have boldness and access to the throne of God to go boldly before the throne of God for the things in our lives we don't deserve because God is good. Hebrews 4, 15 through 16. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus understands because he was also tempted. In Luke 15, 11 to 32, the prodigal son, when his son came, to his senses. He said, I'm going back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled 
with compassion. And he ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. 1 Corinthians 16, 23. The grace of the Lord of Jesus be with you. Jesus is ready to receive you with his wide open arms and hold you. Matthew 7, 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? So whatever you're going through, Jesus understands, taken, because he, uh, when you feel that you failed, don't draw away from Jesus, run to him. Proverbs 28, 1, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. The one who is bold as a lion does not weary. This person is confident that he or she is protected by the Lord and walks with him. Just like a lion, unafraid, through the savanna, majestic and courageous, strong and commanding, other animals flee when she approaches and cower at her mighty roar, for they know that she is fierce and powerful, sovereign among animals. Let's remember Proverbs 28.1. The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Yet how is this so? Often it's the wicked who are known to be strength for their strength and dominions, while the righteous are considered good, kind, merciful. How are the righteous as bold as a lion? The one who is bold as a lion does not weary. This person is confident. He or she is protected by the Lord and walks with him. All they do is guaranteed and certain to triumph in the end. Let's remember who is our creator, our God, almighty, who has completed absolute power. All things indeed created the universe and all rightfully bow to him. Righteousness is living in line with that truth to remind us of God's authoritative position. So what are some of the character's traits of a humble person? The humble are quick to forgive others, difficult to offend, and content to wait on God's justification when they have been wronged. They are patient and don't get frustrated the weakness of others. A humble person is a peacemaker. In fact, we need humility to maintain peace in our lives. Romans 12, 16 says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight, right, sight. A humble person knows when to be quiet and allowing others to have center stage and doesn't feel the need to speak their mind in every situation. A humble person happily serves other people and they don't impress others. They do it unto God, knowing their reward will come from God. A humble person is very thankful. This is one reason 
they're usually so happy. When we live with an attitude of gratitude, it releases joy and power in our lives. A humble person has a tender conscience, is quick to repent. In John 15, 5, Jesus says, apart from me, you cannot do nothing. So today I encourage you to pray and ask God's help. Let him know that you can't do anything without him. Ask him to help you prepare an attitude of humility towards yourself and those around you. As you do, he will supply you with the grace to become everything he has created you to be. And you will truly enjoy the journey all day long. Our closing hymn is 245, more about Jesus. <laughs>